how do you decide what you remix? Um, it's a it's a numerous of things that determine that. It can be my fan base blowing up my DMs about, hey, get this done, do this, do this, this'll be dope. Or it could just be something I feel like is just some BS and I can turn it into something. Or it can be something super dope or an old record that I can switch into something that people gonna dance to and love. Um, I think for the best part of what I do is I can take anything and make it everything. You know, from Yolanda Adams to OT Genesis to Snoop Dogg to the game, I've remixed everybody and now they follow me. Well, besides the game don't follow nobody, but that's my dog and we working on something by the way. But, you know, f to get one of the best gospel artists like Yolanda Adams and s the dopest people like T.I. and Chance the Rapper, to, you get their attention and now they follow you and they follow your everyday life. I think that's dope for me to do that. So. Yeah, man, I think this remixing thing is where it's at. It's like my own little wave. Out of all the celebrities that you've, uh, you just name dropped several, mm -hmm. but out of all the celebrities, which one that follows you or you received a follow from or maybe a past to follow relationship, which one at this point that you've received do you value the most or just means the most to you out of all the people that you've interacted with? Man, that's a good question. Uh, Yolanda Adams, man, you know. Who would ever think? Like, man, you know how I many people I seen crying at the BET Awards when she was singing? You know, to have somebody so legendary, that's somebody my grandma, you know, God bless her, my, my mama, everybody in the world knows who she is. You know, um, nothing against all the other dope greats that follow me, but yeah, man, that's an inspiration for me. You know what I'm saying? With her, was it just a follow or have you had a chance to uh, meet her or work oh, with we, her? Oh, she called me her nephew. That's, that's auntie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I love her. Now, how often do you do a remix? I'm about to, I'm about to remix you when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> you have remixed one of my interviews before. I think I did. It was 21 Savage. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was dope. Yeah. That was, you, yeah, you, yeah. You did remix that one. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, every other day, man. I, man, listen, um, shout out to Beat King, because I was inspired by him to even start doing it. I like to pay homage. You know, Beat King, is, that's that's the big homie. Um, but. Pretty much like he said, I sit home, wait on some dumb shit to happen, and I capitalize. And quit so you, you remix something like every other day or once a day? Sometimes every day, bro. If it's got to, if you know, I wake up out of my sleep, if I wake up, go take a piss and look at my phone and some shit going viral, I see some dope shit, period. That shit got to get done. Is it a, uh, is it a quota you have? Is it like, okay, if a month is 30 days or 31 days, I have to do 15 remixes a month. Is it something like that? Nah, not at all. You know, I might go a month and do only three or five. You know, the quantity part comes just for me just loving what I do. If it's some quality, I'll kind of limit everything else. Like if it's a, you know, I did a remix for the Yodel Kid and that's the little homie, uh, Mason Ramsey, Walmart, you know, I mean, it's done now. They paid me 15 bands to come DJ for 15 minutes to open up his show because they love my remix. I did for him so much. Um, uh, catch me outside. I was re responsible for all that. If it's something quality, you know, I might just do one or two that month, or maybe even just one. You know, that the uh, when I did the Yoda Kid joint, I ain't do nothing else because I was like, this is gonna take all the shine from everything else. So you retired after that. <laughs> Damn there. And you know what's crazy? When I met you last time for the first time, and it was after the interview, it was like, oh damn, I thought you was beyond working. Well, I was working at Verizon. I got sued for $5 million the day after I met you. And it's just crazy how things turn around. I definitely work for myself now, and I'm 2 on court, so God is good. Now, doing these remixes and doing so much of them, has there been any that you held back from putting out to the public? Like, <laughs> yep. you have. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, uh, I don't know if you remember the uh, Bobby Valentino situation. Yeah. With the trans uh, person? The Bobby Valentino situation, you know, you know, that was a situation I know I could have made go viral, but I know it was one of them sensitive situations where I didn't want to. You know, cause you know he might want to buy a beat or you know, you know I'm pretty sure a cool dude. And I don't want to, you know, mess up a relationship. 
in the music world. In the music world, yeah. So you did do a remix. I did it. You never put it out. Never put it out. I see. Like I can put it out tomorrow, and but it's like, uh, it's, I just try to respect people in that situation. If it's too touchy, especially in the sense of the world that we living in, uh, yeah. Did uh, did somebody stop you from putting that out, or was that a last minute self decision there? Yeah, I actually somebody stopped me because, and it wasn't somebody that I personally know. I look him, I you know, I'm not a fake person. I look through my comments. I like to see what the fans are saying because a lot of times they saying some real valuable stuff that can stop me from doing some shit I don't need to do. Somebody's like, yo, don't do that. You know, the whole, you know, that whole community gonna come after you because they gonna feel. It. Even though that's not what the case would have, I thought it would have been, but I didn't want to take that chance to find out the hard way. Mm. Yeah, because that's a strong community over there, especially in Atlanta. Now, how long does a remix generally take for you on average? Uh, to be honest with you, 20 minutes. Very fast. I crank them out, man. I just get it done. If it's something I'm really working, like if, like I produce for a lot of artists, um, just to give you a little game on what I'm working on, like I just did this joint with Kevin Gates, uh, NBA young boy, Quando Rondo, which is one of the, the youngest, hottest right now. I, I take my time on those records for real produce, I mean real artists. But if it's a remix, oh man, I'm getting that shit done. What's the most popular remix uh, up until this point? Oh man, that's easy. Or well, actually it's not. Damn, I thought it was easy. Um, Like the public's uh, it would be between the Greens, Beans, Tomatoes, the Thanksgiving song, and Catch Me Outside. The reason I have to kind of think about that is because Greens, Beans, Tomatoes, just to be honest with you, that's going to get played every Thanksgiving for the rest of our lives. The Catch Me Outside joint actually hit the billboard, though. That's the only song in the first song, definitely not the last song that hit the billboard, but, you know, Greens, Beans didn't do that. Mm. Now, uh, what is your personal favorite remix that you've done so far? Uh, it could be the most popular, it could not, it's just whatever your personal one is. My, first, my, my favorite one is- Out of all the ones you've done thus is far. Is the newest one I just did. It's called Fuck Nigga Free. And you ever heard that song, um, it's sugar free? Well, this one called Fuck Nigga Free. Yeah, I just did that and that shit is dope. Is there a remix that you've put out that you just, you're tired of listening to, you can't stand anymore that you've done? Oh, um, catch me outside. I get like DMs of kids and they'll send me screenshots and DMs. Hey, I'm listening to your song. I'm sick of that song. I don't want to hear that no more. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I wish I never made it, but I got a nice little check out of it. So thank God for that.